This is uh, the latest movie from Jennifer Kent, who, of course, pretty much changed the face of modern horror, uh, or modern popular horror, with The Babadook, which I think is just a terrific movie. And I think we both agreed that it was a, a really important thing. We've had so much correspondence about it. That's actually, that's one of the ways you can tell whether a film has really found its mark, is whether you, you keep getting emails about it over the years, and we have done. This is altogether more down-to-earth and more brutal, um, a tale of colonialism in the British penal colony of what was then called Van Diemen's Land, now Tasmania, set in 1825. Uh, Ashton Franciosi is uh, the Irish convict Claire, and she served her sentence with this British lieutenant played by Sam Claflin, second movie of the week because he's in uh, Charlie's Angels and could not be more different. Um, has no intention of letting her go. And as a result of his intention not to let her go, he effectively steals everything she has from her. So she then is set off on a mission of retribution in which she teams up with a tracker called Billy, who becomes her guide, uh, Billy Mangala, uh, played by Vaikali Ganambar, on this cross-country mission of vengeance. Please, it's broken. It's not broken. It just got wet when you threw it in the river. Where did you get that? Stole it from the hut. With that. What? I'm smart. You white ones go fast, fast, fast. Get nowhere. I go slow. Get everything done. I'm Blackbird. Just fix it. We need to get going. Now, what then happens is they're on this kind of this mission of vengeance. But the, crucially, the point is that they have both suffered the very, very harshest end of uh, colonial oppression, whether it's um, you know uh, British colonialism or male oppression or racism. And at the beginning of the film, there is a really, really tough opening in which uh, we see sexual assault happen in multiple occasions. And apparently when the film first played at uh, some film festivals, there were walkouts at that point. Now, I have to say, having forewarned, forearmed, and, uh, and I think the opening of the film is very, very tough, but it should be said that it is filmed uh, by Jennifer Kent in a way which very specifically, and I think very cleverly, avoids any form of visual exploitation or titillation or anything. I mean, it is they are horrible scenes and they are meant to be horrible, but what they are not is visually graphic. Most of the horror is to do with the acting, the performances, the fact that you, that you see what's happening through the perspective of the victim. Um, that said, the opening is tough. There is no getting around it. It basically sets up what's then going to happen, and it's really, really gruelling. They then, these two characters, uh, set off uh, on this mission, and the film has got this, it's, you know, kind of boxy frame. You were talking about the framing of uh, the lighthouse. It's the which lighthouse, is, which is apparently academy ratio. Four by three. And what the film does is it sees them on this trail in which they encounter hardship and difficulty, but during the course of their journey, they form, uh, they begin to form an unlikely bond, an unlikely friendship. And that's the most important thing, is that in the end, the film, which incidentally was made in collaboration with Tasmanian Aboriginal elders, is about a friendship forged in the darkest of times. Also, softening the harsher edges of the drama is the use of music, because the nightingale is the term that is used to describe our heroine, who sings and has this beautiful singing voice which kind of haunts the narrative. But there are key moments in the film in which song happens as part of the drama. And as a result of that, it lets something into the drama, which then this kind of refers back somewhat to Atlantic's, which implies a kind of a slightly mystical, slightly hyp supernatural, hypernatural element. So it's not just this kind of trudging story of oppression and, uh, and retribution. It becomes something different. So having had the thing at the beginning of it, in which I thought this is very, very tough going, this is, this is very hard, 
actually the, what the film did was it won me over. I mean, I'm a big fan of Jennifer Kent anyway, and I, I, I think what she's doing is telling a story which deserves to have those harsh edges. But um, more importantly, it starts to involve you in emotional ways, and it starts to become more than just a kind of story of, you know, down-to-earth, realistic, gritty depiction of a very, very dark time. And so I think it's impressive. I think it's going to have a, a limited audience because I think that the certainly the toughness of the beginning um, is is going to be an obstacle for some people. But I do think that the de its depiction of the uh, of the horrors of its story is done in a way that very specifically avoids uh, the kind of visual exploitation that we've become so used to in cinema. And I think that for that alone, it is to be applauded.